There is one time in particular where autophagy is not what we want. Autophagy is great though. It's happening all the time, probably happening right now. It happens when you're fasting, it happens when you're in a deficit, it happens when you're working out, it happens just when you're walking. Okay, and it's a recycling system. It's, it's great. It consolidates things. It recycles components of cells and organelles. Like, it's great. But unfortunately, it gets roped into this very simple discussion. Like autophagy is just one monster that's running around your body recycling things. When in reality, there's a lot more going on. And there are times, one in particular, where you don't want it. And we'll get into that in just a second. After today's video, I put a link down below for timeline nutrition. In the world of autophagy and specifically mitophagy, like mitochondrial autophagy, Timeline has published some really interesting research. They've been in JAMA talking about this thing called urolithin A, which is a compound that induces autophagy in the mitochondria when we want it. Very, very cool cutting edge stuff. And they've got the literature to back it up. They're very legit. They're a Swiss company with a patented technology called MitoPure. Really fascinating stuff. And so I put a link down below for 10% off if you want to try it out. They have a capsule form, they have a berry powder form, but then they also have a whey protein form that has it mixed in with the right kind of combination to be able to get the right macronutrients, the right protein, and the urolithin A post-workout. So check them out. Again, that link down below for 10% off using code THOMAS. And I'm not the only one behind this stuff. Like Dr. Gabrielle Lyon is behind this stuff. There's really, really good people with a lot of scientific rigor in their book of expertise that are supporting this compound because it's that cool. So that link is down below underneath this video. So we'll go ahead and tell you straight up when you don't want autophagy, but you're gonna wanna hear me out because it's a balance. If you're trying to build muscle, but that doesn't make sense. Like, can't intermittent fasting be used for muscle building? Well, yeah, it absolutely can. But what we're looking at is a study that was published in the journal Physiology Reports. And it was ultimately, the purpose of the study was to find out if too much training, like too much working out, would actually blunt muscle growth. And they did find that. They did find that when like training frequency was too high, it mechanistically just completely stopped muscle growth. Whereas groups that had like longer recovery were able to build more muscle and get stronger and have more torque. One of the primary systems that was standing in the way of building muscle in the group that was training too much was the autophagy lysosome system. They were having so much in the way of LC3 activation, creating more autophagosomes, that they were creating so much autophagy that it was actually degrading proteins that would be required to ultimately build muscle. You see, muscle building is a balance of muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein breakdown. And when you start activating degradation systems too much, there's an imbalance in the force, right? You start having too much degradation. Now, in this particular study, they were looking at like the frequency of training, right? We all know that a little bit of exercise is going to stimulate autophagy. In fact, exercise stimulates autophagy three to four times more than you're gonna stimulate in a fast. So this has nothing to do with fasting being bad. It has nothing to do with fasting standing in the way of resistance training or, or building muscle. No, it's more so talking about your overtraining, training too much and stimulating autophagy. But fasting does come into play here. So does a caloric deficit. If you're consistently putting yourself in a caloric deficit and you are not giving yourself adequate periods of boluses and surpluses of food, then you're going to be in this world of like autophagy land all the time. The study also found that ULK was activated. ULK is a marker directly associated with the activation and act of autophagy itself. And this was noted as a mechanism that was inhibiting force and inhibiting torque and inhibiting hypertrophy, muscle growth. So if you have too much of it, it does become problematic. And especially people that are interested in autophagy are usually interested in longevity. It's usually they go hand in hand. And if you look at the literature now, autophagy is important, but what might even be equally important is maintaining muscle mass. So how do you find this balance here? Well, with this, remember that while you are fasting, you have high levels of autophagy. While you are training, you have high levels of autophagy. What you don't necessarily want is consistently high levels of autophagy all the time, right? So in this case, in my humble opinion, 
it's good to train in a deficit. It's good to train in a fasted state. It's good to train fasting because you're getting this autophagy happening at once. And then you have a period of time where you can be in a slight caloric surplus for repair and recovery and more mTOR. So what you need to do to have the most success with your muscle building, even if you are someone that fasts, is you need to very much so keep it separate. Keep your deficit periods separate and keep your surplus periods separate. So train in a deficit, train hard, enjoy that period, and then go into a surplus mode where you rest and you eat, right? Or your movement is just less intense. Maybe you're just walking and things like that. Better yet is to emphasize what I talk about all the time, and that is G-Flex. Eat a lot and move a lot. Eat a lot of wholesome food close to the earth and move a lot. That way you offset autophagy and then you stimulate it by moving. You offset it by eating and you stimulate it by moving. It is a constant checks and balances. And if we live too far in autophagy la-la land, we break down and we don't build muscle. And even worse, we break down muscle. But if we can keep a constant checks and balances, it's like constantly dumping some water out of the bucket and then filling it back up and dumping, and you're keeping it at sort of a homeostasis all the time. So when you look at this literature from the physiology report study, we can really see that adequate recovery between training sessions, lower stress on the body and minimum effective dose, and periodic deficits are really what we need for that perfect balance. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.